Yes, we are live. Hello. We're live already. Hello. Good yes. evening, guys. So before we introduce our speaker tonight, let me go and share the link first. Yes. As usual, okay? you need to share the link to our. So if you're watching this, please go and share. I will click the watch parties, start your watch party so that your friend will know you're watching us, okay? Oh, okay, we are. Let me see. Five second delays. Keep here. Right. Okay. Share. Okay. Share your story. Today is Wednesday. Okay. Hi, yes. Evening. That means so during MCO, right? I really forgot today is which day. Right? Oh, okay, you need to lower down your volumes already. Okay. Yes, yeah, I need today. to. Okay. Hi guys, good evening. Remember, you can click the start button, watch party, and share with your friends what you're doing and uh, you're watching us. Okay, so we just chit chat tonight, talk about uh, never worry about the plantar facilities. Okay, so basically, I think a lot of runners, even non runners, right, they have this issue from other sports and for running as well. So uh, let me introduce introduce uh, Vanessa. So when I know about Vanessa, basically she's a certified yoga therapist. Not many yoga instructors there are certified uh, therapists. Uh, she is one of them. She also is a full time uh, therapist, uh, yoga therapist in Malaysia. We have focused more on to uh, therapeutic side, therapeutic side, and she is uh, able to uh, prescribe the yoga posture, readings, and uh, my. It's okay so without further further your time so let's uh Vanessa speak about her and a little bit introduction okay hi Vanessa. hi Hello. sam thanks for inviting yeah no you problem. basically have already introduced me pretty much uh just a little add a little bit more is uh sometimes not everyone come to the class are perfect Everyone will have their little bit of their thing, you know, maybe they have thyroid issue, maybe they have uh, spinal issues like sleep disease or scoliosis, or uh, some of the common one is the lower back pain. I also mm -hmm. have students who come to me with the heel pain, which is today's mm -hmm. topic, plantar fasciitis. So what I'm going mm -hmm. to share today is there are poses that help to prevent this happen or maintained this so that you don't have this reoccur. Let's say you already have the heel pain and then you uh, get it fixed. But in order to avoid this to happen again, some of the poses you can do to keep your calf lengthened and stretched so that this will not happen again. The reason why that uh, plantar fasciitis is happening is your calf is very tight and your Achilles tendons is also very tight. Achilles tendons is that little part between your calf and your heel. And the calf is, of course, behind your knee, that muscle, big muscles, all the way to, to that almost touching your ankle. That's the uh, calf muscle. I think I need to explain a little bit because maybe not a lot of people understand mm -hmm. where are the muscles. So when this part sure. of the muscles are tight, so there are actually yoga postures to uh, help to uh, stretch this part then you will not have the pain. So maybe you can help me to share one slide that I'm going to show to the audience what we can do, and then I can give instruction while the pictures are shown. Sure. Oh, okay. Can you uh, go down a little bit? Yes, perfect. Okay, perfect. this pose is called the chair pose. So you hmm. see when you are standing on your hip width, the most important thing is your toe and your ankle is pointing the same direction. I realize a lot of people when their toe is pointing forward and then the knee is either going to the side or going in. And this is very dangerous where you are going to have injuries on your ankle and your knees. So that's number one. Number two, when you sit down, your knee should not go over to your toes. Then you are going to engage your toes and the heel. The weight goes through the 10 toes and the heel. 
Then when you slowly bend down, a lot of us, uh, the butt will start to go out. So it's yeah, mm. sticking the butt out. We should not have that happen. So you're going to bring the tailbone goes inside so that your core muscle is engaged. In this pose, actually, there are multiple benefits. Not only yeah. is good for plantar fasciitis, it trains your thigh muscle, it trains your uh, core muscle. So this is one of the poses. If you just stay there for about 30 seconds, you can start to you will start to feel the burning part on your thigh. But then you can see the calf is already lengthened, right? This is one of the easier poses that you mm. don't require a lot of uh, flexibility. The next slide mm. you're going to show them that will require a little bit of flexibility. So the, mm. the thing is, when you look back, you should only see your toes and not seeing your heels. If you see your heels, that mean your leg is pointing out or pointing in. Again, is the joint of your ankle will have the risk of injuries. So that's number one. Number two is try to press the heel down to the mat as much as possible. So this part is like level two. It really stretches the thigh. And then the, the hand in front, your finger is spread and place the weight on the tips. If you place the weight on the back of the palm, after a while you feel you have this wrist pain. So to, then you mm. have to engage your hand very strongly. Then you have to mm. make your spine very long. Then the hand is just by the ear. So it will look like a perfect triangle from the side view. The important mm. is where you point the toe. Those, uh, mm. those of you who is watching, maybe you can also try these two poses and then you can start to feel your calf is start to lengthen. You can see this pose, the Achilles tendon is very much stretched. A lot of us which are uh, with a little bit tight hamstring or calf, the heel actually cannot touch the, the, mm. the, the, the mat yet. It's okay, you just place a, a tower underneath or a, like a small book where it helps to support you first. So once you have been practicing for a while, you can slowly remove the tower and then have your heel touching. No one comes with absolute flexibility, right? So everyone start with a little bit easy. We'll start with the pose earlier, the chair pose. Then you can move on to this one's level two. We call it the downward facing dog. It's like a dog that's facing down. So these are the mm. two easy poses that uh, I'm, I'm going to share and that is uh, very simple, very safe. You can do it at home, even nobody is seeing you. And it helps mm. you to uh, release the tension of your calf and also release the pain of your heel. It might be mm. painful in the beginning, but you reap the benefit later. Um, um, it's okay. also, let's mm. say for example, we need the, the user, they cannot touch the heel on the ground, right? Can they like use the foam roll to release the some glute and a calf that, so that they can easily do this pose? Is it okay to do that? They can try to use the roll, roll, foam roller to roll mm. the calf and also the hamstring. That help to, release a little bit of tension then only mm. they go back to this again you can now yeah, they can try that's a good idea yeah this because I sometimes know. many uh not many people's like uh, people who are doing yoga that they, they have a, a quite good uh, range of motions right so yeah. a lot of people they are hands uh, very tense uh, <laughs> not from running but from walking very tense actually it's because of the uh, myofascia the the uh. muscles you know, but not a lot of people know what's myofascia. Maybe we can explain mm. a little bit. The muscle is built out of fibers. So like here, fiber, fiber, fiber. And then there is another thing that like a net thing that wrapped around the other way. That is also fiber, but it's different ways. Mm. So if your muscle mm. is always maintained at this length, that muscle may, that the fiber may stick together. So when the fi fibers stick together, that's where the mm. pain start. So the foam mm. roller, I haven't tried yet, but the theory why I know is it's help to entangle it. Mm. Then you can help to slowly release the entangle fiber, uh, entangle myofascia, and then you can uh, move on easier and better. You know, you mm. had a good idea. I never even thought of a rolling foam because it's never in my practice. <laughs> I just oh, okay. do it. 
because I always tell uh, runners and our user, right? So how can you use other things to complement each other? Yeah. So sometimes the runners, they always run, but they don't do cross training. Like SMR, cell my function release is like firm row. It's good. Yeah. Uh, yoga is, is good as well because to help you to get more flexibilities. Some some people, they say, oh, uh, you cannot do this sport. Uh, they, this one make you injured. But to be honest, you need you really need to get the specialist persons to help you on that sport so that you don't easily get injured, especially like Vanessa. Basically, I, I've been to her, her, her class before. She really uh, look at your posture uh, step by step. It's not about how many reps you do or can you do the full range of motion or not. So she will show you that, hey, you need to focus this part, this part, so that you can able to achieve this. So these are the, uh, uh, I call it details. So I personally, I talk about running technique. I'm very, I'm very detailed on running technique. So I, I Mm. So any any uh, tell us about more about some case study like uh, planta facilities that you have you have other users they also have this issue right so how do you overcome using a yoga side or other methods? Yeah, definitely. Uh, planta facility is not limited only to runners. There are people mm. who uh, happen to people who walk a lot, like mm. uh, those who did last time. Those who work in the airport, you know, it when you have to walk from the gate to the office is a very long distance. So the, yep. the stuff, the ground stuff like this, they will have this kind of pay. Or mm. other sports like if you're doing kickboxing or Muay Thai, usually mm. the they, are cut, they require the calf to be very strong and contracted, right? So if yep. you are overtrained, the muscle mm. doesn't really know how to release it yet. And then that's mm. where the planta start to happen. So mm. this is just one of the way that with the poses, Another way mm. is using the golf balls, but that is mm. very, very painful. <laughs> using the golf ball, where you just uh, step on it and then you start to roll. Not that even is... using a golf ball. I would say every morning, right, people who have plantar facilities like me, right, previously, right, every morning when I step down, right, I feel like a, a, a stitch, durian stitch in my leg, you know. So it's very, very painful. The needle, the needle is very pinching. Very painful. Yeah. Uh, very painful but every time i run i feel the the thing is there so it's it's, it's not good like, especially every morning like, so it's quite painful like. and it will stay with me i still remember the first time i got it is about three to four months right second time is about eight months ago you come back again and again oh so it, it happened again the another yeah, thing, for yeah. yeah another thing i need to add is uh sometimes not even the sport is the shoe that you wear mm -hmm. If your sole is too flat, you know, sometimes ladies, we have all kinds of type of shoes with different size of the sole, right? So when yeah. your sole is very flat, it will also uh, have this uh, plantar facilities happen. So sometimes people will say, I'm not even a sport person. I don't do sports and I don't walk a lot. Why do I still have this? Then you have to check your shoe. There mm. are a lot of reasons that this happened. Let but me share about how did I get the planta facility for running. Uh. So basically, yeah. the first time I, I get it, the time is uh, when I do uh, I do a lot of overshriding. Later, I show you the picture, uh, some samples. Oh. Overshriding okay. means you let hit from your body when you run. So it's like a like a overextend your leg, a hit oh. from your body. So you 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 like hitting the ground and the impact hitting from there. So from there, you you like just imagine this is your foot right. You like roll on it. So imagine this is your fascia, right? So every time you roll on it, right, it's like you're extending your fascia. So it caused the inflammation from there. This is where uh, I got my first one. The okay. second time when I got my plantar facilities is because I do active landing. So active landing is just like use a small hammer, keep on hitting, hitting your part. yeah, the same part. It's also overstrap, but you keep on hitting the same part. So it become like even even uh worse, worst case scenario is which is six to eight months and you know, you'll cause that. So it's really, really painful from that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Let me just. Yeah. Show, show people like us who doesn't really know what it is overstriding and what it is look like. Okay. So this is the first picture that, uh, uh, let me just click this. Uh... Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, this is the explain what is the issues uh. so basically people who land over strike or midfoot landings they will have chances to, to got this especially people call heel striking uh. so you can see here right the shoes right so when you do heel landing right you roll on heel to toes we call heel to toes you roll on it 
So every step you roll on it, right? Imagine you're running about 160 steps per minute. If you run a full marathon, it's about five to six hours, right? You can calculate uh, wow. six hours, 60 minutes, six times 600 is about 360 times about 160 is about how many steps you roll on it. You caught the information. Lot. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot, right? Yeah, so you see always people after finish a marathon, they walk like, okay, you are. Last time I, I saw. Sometimes it's when you don't have a proper technique. Mm, yes. So every sport actually, they, they have a, we call a framework, a technique skills. So are you fall out of the, the skill set or are you between in the frameworks? So what this is what we call a, a technique, a skill. Yoga, they have a skill set. Uh, ballet, they have a skill set. Karate, they have their skill set. Running also, they have their own posture. So as you can see, this picture, right, we break into three parts, okay? The, the lower trunk positions, foot pullings, and landing parts. So most of the injury came from the landing part, which is this hip below is called your GCM, general center of mass. Anything land a hip from the body, right, it will cause you this kind of injury. So plantar fasciitis is one of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's very detailed. Yep. So again, uh, how to prevent it? I mean, of course, you can do uh, other postures like yoga, and you can also get some advice from, from guru, from technique or so. So this is what we recommend to do that. So besides that, any... Yeah, let's see if anyone has uh, questions that they need mm. us to clarify or uh, mm. just maybe we ask who else who has the plantar fasciitis right now that mm -hmm. will be very helpful if uh they can ask us a lot more questions that they are not sure about mm. okay guys if you have any questions regarding about the plantar fasciitis fascia then you can post here we can try our best to share with you our opinions okay what we face okay Hmm. Now my side here, I don't see the comments. It's only you can see it though. Yep, I will usually I will click the button like this one to show ah. what's the what's the questions. Yeah. So you had two times. Wow. Hmm. It came that was back. Uh, many years back. It was uh, five six years ago. So understand how is the structure of running doing because a lot of people say hey running you don't need to learn one basically you just run uh, some, some people they even say there some people they even say we are born to run but my question to them is why there's a one third of people always got injury so if we are born to run but why we have so many injuries is it because we forgot how to run or is it because we do something wrong for the movement so this is always my question marks so i will ask but so do you know how to run how do you run? How do you train? Why you got these issues? And a lot of a lot of, a lot of questions from there. So, so yeah. No, but so I also I analyze. Mm. I also analyze a lot of runners uh, from the videos, right? Usually they they are they have a very common uh, two two intention. They do this. Uh, they got these these injuries. One is because they always think that if they extend their leg, they can run faster, further. Is the first thing. Second, they always hit the ground very hard to create an impact. So this is a, a two main reason intention that they have this. So my advice to do the strike lengths. So start from the beginnings. So from there you will create a, a good habit. The intention shouldn't be landing, it should be pulling. So that is my advice. So yeah, this is how I, I don't have my third time up, touch wood up here. I bet the shoe means a lot also, right? If your shoe is not a very good quality, you will land on it harder. And that is what mm. is, is also part of the reason. Uh, to me, shoe is more to, uh, my opinion is more to pr protect your feet. Just like yeah. you need the shoes. Uh, of course, you can train barefoot. Uh, barefoot is good also. You can uh, oh. have a very good uh, perceptions, okay? So because our foot below, there's many, many muscles, especially you need to do a lot of trainings on that. Okay, so uh, yeah, training is good, but not for full marathons. You need to get advice from specialists. But shoes usually, uh, okay, I think for the last few few weeks, we talk about shoes also. I also invite one of my Hong Kong uh, elite runners. He opened a shoe shop in Hong Kong. And 
really we need to wear those very, very slim shoes we call flat uh, raising flat or are we should we wear the support shoes so this question i always tell them that after i have talked to them i have read a lot of articles right so to, to me it's pretty simple for the racing flat right you really need to start from a very short distance to get used to it and if let's say you don't have a calf strong calf muscle or we call elastic cities right you cannot manage the shoe you need those like a uh, really support shoes to wear those are help you to like uh, energy response uh, returns or something those are for those people who they really have a weak, very weak calf muscles they can wear those but for long terms i will still recommend people don't go shortcuts you really need to train you already know your calf is weak or your then, elastic is weak yeah you must train right so you can start from those like a shoe yeah uh, those like a racing set start from maybe one to five k uh, using that to do a lot of drills because when you're doing drills right raising flat is good for the perception the feeling okay i give you an example what those like winter time shirt you and swim right why you need to wear swimsuits because you have a better perception right so it's the same as the shoes as well so you can use that for training for a short distance after you get longer and longer you can manage 10k then you start to use that but you need to take time but starting people will still wear support shoe for me i'm a flat fit so usually people will say flat fit you should wear a support shoe but to me training i usually wear a lot of uh, racing fat to train my perceptions this is my my opinions Training the calf, also, there are also a lot of uh, yoga poses to train the calf. So mm -hmm. we can have lengthen and we can have uh, toning from the yoga mm. side of uh, point of view. I think you have a question, right? Yep. Uh, Sam, do you have using authentic insole to help fix plantar facility for reoccurring? Uh, to me, uh, Raja, uh, I do think of get the authentic to put in the shoe, racing shoes. Articles, team, and certifications that they told me basically your, your plantar facility is not caused by the authentic, it's caused by your movement, which is your landing and your wash right. So if we know the issue already, why don't we overcome that? You're going to learn how to overcome the areas instead of we wear orthotic. Orthotic is just a, I would say, I never tried that, so I, I cannot say it's good or not good. Okay, but to me, I really not using that, but it overcome that plantar facilities. And personal, I'm a fat fit. I never wear orthotic, but I saw some elite runners, they wear the orthotic for the last 10 years. They always uh, podiums and they, they, they say it's, it's work for them, but I, I haven't tried to be honest. So to me, I I have managed to not to use that. I can overcome it, but it's true training. You need a little, little bit of patience, uh, especially you need to do some uh, barefoot training in the soft ground, soft ground, and also do a lot of elastic jump. The uh, we call root jump, uh, Okay. Fear. Yeah, I just did a live in in Hoka that uh, we did a lot of uh, foot muscles. How to use your toes to walk. Uh, your uh, uh, fit out, fit into walks. Those those are strengthen your 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 angles and your mobilities and also your calf muscles. So those are the things are good for fit. So today I just focus lower leg only. <laughs> so yeah. So if you miss out, you can go to Hokkaido Malaysia and watch back the videos. You can replay from that. So uh, to me. Um, so what, what do you think? Sorry. Ah, uh, sorry. You have what? I I have a question here that uh hmm. Crystal is asking. What? Hmm is soft ground mean okay soft ground means you can run when i talk about uh barefoot running right so usually soft surface training right you can run on those like a track running track those are a very soft surface or you run on the football field those are very soft surface because football? when you're training for yeah, yeah. sorry fields like the where they yeah. have grass yeah when they have grass right because you're gonna cause you uh, maybe hygiene issue or you're gonna get some skin off some injuries right so i recommend you can try on the soft surface in the running track or the football field the grasses because those are very soft it's easy to protect your foot okay so you can try maybe nothing from five to ten minutes if you're comfortable next time maybe you can try more than that but take it very slowly progression so usually i cool down ask my student take off your shoe go and run on the track that's my routine 
if you train in the UM, then you know lah. All my students take off their shoes after cool down. They just jog over there. It, it's very relaxed. There is mm. one interesting fact about this, uh, Sam. Uh, mm. We call it the Earth thing. That means yeah. you are barefoot on the Mother Earth, and there mm. is actually has a healing power. You mm. automatically you feel good. Discharge the electric, right? Something yeah, like that. the discharge of the electron. That is one that of the yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, she has another question. Um. Another question. Do you think okay. we can run on the soft sand? Sand, though. Yes. Uh, in barefoot training, basically, people do run on a soft sand. There's a few benefit. Uh, first thing first is uh, when you're running on a soft sand, right? Mm -hmm. So. It's easy to see, are you push off or are you pulling up your leg? If you really push off the sand, right? You can see the sand is like going off like, wow, like yeah, that. yes. Flower, right? So I, then I know, oh, running issues. And second is when you pull your leg up, right? And you notice when you land the time, it's very, uh, we call passive, not active. It's very soft. It's like, like everless. So these are the two good, good uh, benefit. The third one will be the, your foot will, will, will develop a good uh, perceptions. So what do you mean perceptions? Basically, your foot, right? If you take off the shoes, right? It's, imagine it's like your eye, okay? It has a sensor, okay? If you wear a shoe, right? Usually, you, you just like me, wear a glass, lah, so I can... The, the sensor is getting weak. So how can we strengthen that sensors, which is you take off your shoe and go and train either eye in the sand. Sand also is a soft surface in the running track, soft surface into the football field grasses. So these are the good training ground, but I'm not recommend beginner really take off your shoe, go and do a full marathon outside. You're going to get a hygiene issue. You're going to get yourself injury, not even blister or you're going to, maybe your skin going to peel off. You're going to get blister or anything like that. So you really need to train on a safe environment. This is my advice. Okay. Yeah. Training it. Being patient is very important. Uh. A lot of us I see, right, they want to achieve the goal like immediately. But if you are without a proper training, it, mm. how do you achieve the goals that you set? So it, it's it's just teaching you, you have to be patient, you will take some time to get you to this uh, ready, then only you can achieve. I mean, in, in every other sports or non-sports also, we just have to let the body get ready for it. Uh, okay, there's a question here. I'm trying to Google and see what is what does it mean, matata sajana. Okay, matata sajana. Oh, this is new terms for me. Okay, uh, do we invite <laughs> yeah. guests to come in to answer this question? <laughs> yeah, uh, that would be a great idea. Let's see. Okay, let me read on a Google verse. Uh, is the condition which your board of foods uh, become painful inflammations in uh, uh, running and jumping because of well, Okay, so okay. I, I try to answer from my opinions. Uh. So basically, these two different, right, the PF and the Matata Saja, right? So I think Panta Fasitis usually is the, the heel. Uh, let me just share. It usually happen on the, the heel side, okay, which is the fascia side. This these terms, right, Matata, right, is usually at the ball of the foot. The, the, we call it the ball of the foot, uh, the, the, our feet, we have a ball of the foot. The, it's also an inflammation. So usually it's caused by those like a thing you hit the ground so hard, right? It will cause the inflammation. Okay. Depends which part. If you front part, you usually cause like the, the terms you mentioned about. So it is came from uh, active landing. Both also have chance to do that. If you do active landing, you have chance to get plantar fasciitis or the matata surgeon. Okay. So that is my 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 answer for you. So for more details, I think. And maybe we need to ask Jess again. Lah, huh? So yeah. yeah, if you're from running, yes, it's active landing. Active landing. Yeah. Yes. I think it's the the different part of the the leg. One is on the heel, is one in the front, which is the ball of the feet. Mm, yes. So usually imagine this is your ball of feet, right? So usually uh if let's say we, we're running, it's like uh, supernate four, supernate four. If what happens if you run like this? So it become they become the inflammations. Or maybe you, you you run like this. So 
So that's why you've got inflammation at the back and heels. The front one will be the active landing. Okay. So I have another question. I mean, I think that will be for me now. After training, what is okay. the yoga pose for warm down? Okay. Hmm. Uh, actually, for warming down, it's more about uh stretching because your muscles has been contracting a lot when you uh, run, especially hmm. for your calf and your thighs. So one hmm. of the poses, which is just now I show the downward facing dog where it looks like a triangle, that is uh, one of the good poses to also stretch your calf. Well, hmm. the other way, if you want to stretch your thigh, then there will be another kind of pose already. But most importantly, whatever sports you do, you need to have some time to restore like you just you can just lie down and rest you know with the whole body relaxed on on the ground it doesn't matter mm. what what sports you do the thing is one we once we were doing this kind of whatever sport it is we are becoming very active so the mm. muscle is contracting expanding contracting and uh, extending a lot it's mm. a healthy a healthy muscle it has to be expense and contract expands and contract and then you okay. also have time to let it rest so mm -hmm. the resting time is the completion of this these two you cannot have the muscle always contract that's where you over train or mm -hmm. you cannot have the muscles always stretch it's also could be an over train so we have to mm -hmm. have a balance of contraction extension and also total rest so you need the muscles to slowly release and go back to the original forms so the muscles mm. that you can stretch because of the run is the double facing dog just now the picture we show in uh where it looks like a triangle another mm. one is to stretch your thigh to the back that is one of mm. the the another poses that we we did not show that was uh the winding down one so it's mm. not as poses that help you to stretch your thigh that is good not the mm. not just not the first picture that we show, chair pose, that is mm. not uh, warming down. That is to mm. warm up. That is for you to do before the run. So, Crystal, I hope you I can answer your question. If you yeah, still I have a question, you can also uh, send me a message. Well, I, think I agree with uh, Coach Vanessa. Uh, muscles always, they like to do two things. One is contract, one is relax. You cannot yeah. always contract, but no relax. Just like you train already, but there's no cool down. There's no like SMR. There's no like uh, doing yoga or uh, relax, flex your flex your your bodies. I always I always use the term flex your body flexibilities. Flex flexibility is like your relax your your muscles, your fascia, and your ligaments and your joint. So those when you relax yeah. it, then you all back to normal range of motion. Okay, I have uh, one last question here. KS asks, how can we illustrate the passive and active landing? So uh, if you're at home. Uh, I can ask you to stand up to do two movements, okay? One, you jog on the spot, but you hit the ground like this, like this, okay? You jog on the spot, uh, you don't run in front, okay? You just jog on the spot. Just jog on the spot, you hit the ground, try to hit the ground like this, okay? This is the first move. You don't think about how to land. This is called passive, okay? Passive and active. Active means you have intention to do something. Passive means you're not trying to land it, you're trying to pull your leg. So these are the two intentions. You can try it at home, okay? Because I have a limited space, I cannot do the movement here. Yeah. So Coach Sam, you were saying that if it is passive, is you're trying to pull your leg up. Yeah, pull your ankle, uh, pull to your hip. So those are the, we call, uh, because in post method terms of running technique, they have three SOP, which is the pull, uh, post fall and pull. Okay, so pulling will be the recovery when you can run longest. So those are the things we are, the only action we do is falling and pulling. So there's no like active landings. So yeah. And uh, people always say, what is uh, natural running? Okay, they always say natural running, natural running. But natural running means you are doing, just run but do nothing. Means you are, you're doing other action, but instead of landing. These are we call natural running. Okay. Wow, I learned so, something too. <laughs> Okay, Wiling asked you this question. Dynamic stretching. What do you think? Mm. I think this one is for me. Uh, okay. Mm, yes. Static stretching. Uh, let me explain about the muscles first. Uh, mm. Also about the organs. Um, 
sometimes the muscle is not just one layer, right? There are muscles below it also, the deeper muscle. And then there are organs, so muscle, muscle, organs. The mm. why is the uh, static is when you hold, that means you're holding the pose there. I can just mm. have, ask you to do a simple test. If you can lift something up, this is static, right? So mm. you're just holding. After a while, you feel the shaking. That means it mm. works first and deeper and deeper. Not just the first layer of the muscle, but it goes deeper, the second muscle, and then eventually it reaches to the whatever that is there at the bottom. Dynamic mm. is uh, like a rubber band. So it works on the first layer of the muscle. It does not really go into the, there is no chance to go to the second layer. So it depends on what you want on, on that day. If you want to just work on the uh, first layer, but you want to do cardio, then you do the dynamic. If you don't mm. need to do the cardio, but you want to work a very deep muscle, then you do the static. Like usually I ask them to hold 30 seconds. Like the first mm. pose just now, if you try to hold 30 seconds, you will start to feel it. It's really burning on your the, the front part of the thigh that is closer to the knees. This is mm. why in yoga is always slow. The funny thing is I saw people explain what is yoga. Oh, that is a really, really slow karate. <laughs> huh? I think so hard. <laughs> uh, anyway. Can I follow or can find the yoga? <laughs> <laughs> it's like mm. really yeah. slow. Kick, very slow, eh? Kick, okay. But yeah. it's, it's nice to see what people's perception is. So that is the mm. thing. It depends on your goal. You cannot be static all the time because then you don't get to uh, do your heart pump up your your heart rate so you oh, again you need to have a balance and see the goal of that day what you want if you want to work on cardio go to dynamic i agree let's mm. go on until you sweat and then when you're done maybe you want to do the static the static is really work inside the the muscle you know sometimes the student will say i feel this part is very lemon you know like those, those those feelings <laughs> yeah then uh both are good. It depends on mm. what you want. The sequence, I will say, uh, my, my opinion is usually people run, they will do dynamic first. Yes. After end, they will do static. Those yes. are the normal sequence. Why people don't do static first? Because after you do static, right, you have like... You don't feel like doing no energy to run anymore. It's like, yes. okay, I'm done already. Yes. I want to do 10K, to maybe do 5K. This is like, you haven't started, you already gone already. So I always tell people, if you really do warm up, please make sure it's really warm up. It's not like, all out already. Or do this, this, yeah, uh, <laughs> So, yeah, one thing about this uh, dynamic is it keep up your heart rate, but it also give you the body heat. Mm. So when your body muscles are heated, that's where the best performance you can do in your sports because that's your mm. muscles really ready for what you want to do, stretching or toning. That's why mm. uh, in yoga, right, we also have uh, quite a dynamic part in the beginning that keep mm. moving one, keep moving, it's just only one breath. And like our regular yoga for runner class, they will do 12 sets of this call, uh, this thing called the sun salutation. So when they mm. finish, they actually already drench. Their, their heart pumping is very fast and they are stretching a lot. Then their body is warm. That is the time that they are ready to move on to uh, more challenging poses. And that's where they can do the static stretch. Mm. This, uh, yep. Also, the sequence of uh, yoga is, is very similar. Mm. Wow, we have been talking almost 40 minutes, Sam. Eh? Yeah, correct. So if you guys really want to know more about uh, yoga, because yoga perception is to a lot of guys like, hey, this is women's sports. But no, actually, there's a lot of guys move into uh, like yoga or Pilates. I even have a friends like Miwa. He's a he's a Pilates coach. Like he's a he's a male. Like. So I think is 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 there's no like female or male sports. It's it's all gender equalities one. So you can go and try. So let me share with you something. Um, if you still have any questions, okay, let wait for one two minutes. If you have any questions, if not, I'm gonna share my things. So we have a uh, one of the program called Get Fit Thirty Days. It's during the MCOs, we launch it. Uh, me and uh, Coach Benisa, we do this uh, 
we group together with other coaches, we launch this program. So the intention is to help people, not only for running, if people want to do cross training or maybe people not doing running, they want to do some exercise at home, especially housewife, or your parents, your kids. So it's very friendly movements. Uh, okay, look like there's no questions. So let me just share the screen. Okay, oops. Okay, this is the program. So basically, inside you have a uh, three approach. If you want to improve your heart and lung conditions, uh, you want to improve your aerobic fitness, you want to have better conditions, agility, and flexibilities, this is a class for you. Basically, inside we have about uh, six spots. Okay, one is Zumba, we have yoga, we have high intensity interval training, we have hip hop, tabada, we have strength, and even running drills. So pretty simple, every week we have about 14 class. Total one month is about 56 classes. You can join unlimited classes. Just a fee of 59.90 is a monthly assessment fee. So we always encourage people to stay at home, work at home, try not to go outside with a big group, uh, except you want to go for work. So this training basically is a uh, Zoom uh, virtual training. It's a 40 minutes each class. So if you're interested to know more, just need to scan the QR code in my right hand side below which is you can register from there and i think you can enjoy all the sports with all our instructor here okay except me okay <laughs> oops okay i have one last question before we say goodbye uh but sure. that that question is for me how about breathing okay. can help it on running that's definitely mm. that's like our yoga for runner class on every saturday mm. I will mm. teach them the specific breathing for different mm. terrain. Let's say people who is doing trail runnings, the the surface mm. is either you go uphill or you go downhill or you go flat, right? So going mm. uphill, there will be a specific uh, breathing. In going downhill, mm. there will also be a specific breathing. Same as mm. the long distance runners or marathon. Some mm. I know some people they can go to hundred km or hundred miles. Mm. If you but you don't shoot at the beginning, right? You have to keep the space until you can reach to the end, and then only you shoot at the end. So that is also a specific breathing for keeping the space. And at the mm -hmm. end, if you want to shoot at the finishing line. There is another type of breathing. All this mm. uh, is is in my class. Uh, I mean, uh, the yoga for runner class or this class. This class uh, is more about yoga for generals. But of course, if mm. all the participant is is runner, then I will switch the switch the syllabus for runners, especially. Mm. So this is one of the benefit of uh, our class that is very flexible to see the audience. What are the audience and what are their what can we add on to the value of the audience? Yeah, correct. So basically, uh, this uh, get fit the days program is more for general. Uh, audience more like uh, people um, they want to do some exercise they want to get fit yeah. you want to go into a specialized like uh, Benisa he have, she have a class that you can uh, leave us a message we will connect you to the Benisa so those are focused maybe one to ten groups is more uh, specialized in one sports okay so the get fit the days is more like a you pay one fee you enjoy multiple sports just like your Netflix Netflix yes <laughs> Netflix live but all the sport you can yeah seven days okay morning and uh, night times okay it's a good time because now i think most of people still work from home people uh, i think governments is still encourage people to work from home although some people they need to go back to the office like hr and, yeah i think most of my friends they still work from home i text them hey how are you uh, at home or at office of course at home la. so i say yeah okay but they have a long working hours uh, even working at home right because i think most of the time people who have kids right they spend more time with the kids than they need to do works right they take turns with the wife and i think that's the challenge so why don't you just get the program and you can play the sports together with your kids it's a kid friendly uh, exercise all of them yeah for the get fit that it is okay i think we have no further questions so i will see you guys tomorrow tomorrow is uh how to control your we have another facebook live we talk about how to control your craving <sighs> talk about food i think two hours not enough a lot of people love i think a lot of people love this topic the craving or things or 
ladies dessert okay so for i think ladies will love this topic lah, okay to, tomorrow we have a, a one of the dietitian is uh, simon simon will come to talk about share about how to control your craving okay you can crave it, but you need to control okay okay guys uh thank you for staying with us for the next uh, almost 45 47 minutes so happy to have you guys thank you very much good night have a nice thank day thank you bye bye, Namaste. bye, -bye.